Hello and uh, welcome to the world as we see it. Um, my name is Lloyd Mitchell and uh, I am an ordinand with the St. George's Church uh, here in Patia in Thailand. Um, and today we are uh, celebrating, if not commemorating specifically, we are talking about the Feast of uh, Mary Magdalene. Um, so today is the Feast of Mary Magdalene and uh, that uh, really is what we are going to do. Normally we would be reading uh, some Tillich. Um, I, I, I might well otherwise be coming up with some other stuff um, but today, uh, dominating uh, today, uh, and rightly so, is the Feast of Mary Magdalene. Now we're going to talk about Mary Magdalene first of all. Uh, who was she and what was her significance um, to the early church, um, to, to Jesus, um, to the other apostles, um, before turning our attention to another um, related conversation, uh, debate, question, okay, and one which has uh, been rather contentious um, today. Oh, by the way, what I wanted to do also was to acknowledge the uh, followers, uh, Kader Soros has followed about seven hours ago and so we want to acknowledge um, that follower. I don't know who Kader Soros is um, but let's just acknowledge them. Uh, so thank you very much. Welcome um, and welcome to uh, the two viewers we have at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're return, uh, returnees or whether or not this is your uh, first time visiting our stream. Um, Either way, you're very, very welcome. Now, let's let's start by talking about uh, Mary and um, her significance. Now, one of the things that uh, we have uh, done, what I have done, is uh, looked at a number of different sources. Okay, which you know, I I know. You might say, well, yeah, that's that's normal. Um, but uh, I, I, I quite liked the Wikipedia description uh, of Mary Magdalene. Uh, I, I, I find the um, let's go and have a look at that and uh, we can we can make that uh, fit on the page a bit nicer. Is that going to fit? Uh, yeah, that, that that will do. That will do. OK, so we can see that. And uh, just as a, a bit of a summary, um, it says that uh, Mary Magdalene, sometimes called Mary of Magdala, or simply the Magdalene, um, was a woman who, according to the uh, canoni canonical Gospels, travelled with Jesus as one of his followers and was a witness to his crucifixion and its aftermath. She was mentioned by name 12 times in the canon, I can't, I can barely say this word, it's, it's one of those words I'm going to trip over whenever we reach it, but let's carry on. Canonical Gospels, more than most of the Apostles and more than any other woman in the Gospels other than Jesus' family. Mary's epithet uh, Magdalene may mean that she came from the town of Magdala, a fishing town on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee in Roman Judea, obviously on the Levant, um, that land bridge that um, is where modern day Israel is. Modern day uh, Judea. Um, and Yemen and uh, all of, of, of that that area. Um, so uh, the Gospel of Luke 
uh, and we, we, I, I'm, I'm not going to read all of this, but basically, uh, you know, the, 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 the point here is that um, she was a witness to the crucifixion of Jesus um, in the run up to the crucifixion when the other apostles uh, did not stand by Jesus. She jolly well did. And uh, she was with uh, Jesus and was a witness to the crucifixion and she was um, the uh, one of the people who was there uh, at least um, when the tomb was found uh, empty and she was the first to witness Jesus's resurrection now what does this mean um, now she has been called the apostle to the apostles now the word apostle is an interesting one so let's let's quickly shoot over there because I was looking at this uh, earlier uh, today and the word apostle where are we uh, mm -mm. and there are and what it means um, so let's have a look so an apostle is an evangelist, okay, a vigorous and pioneering advocate or supporter of a particular policy idea or cause. That's what a po an apostle means. So when we are saying that, um, you know, th there are the apostles of Jesus Christ, the um, the, 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 the the folk who uh, you know heard Jesus speaking and repeated his words. And we, 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 we talk about each of the 12 chief disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, the first, arguably, the first uh, disciple uh, after Jesus uh, died and rose again was Mary Magdalene. She was, by definition, the first Christian after Jesus' death and resurrection and this is very interesting isn't it because this makes her a very important key individual in the early church a central figure now she continues to be a central figure um, and there are all manner of different writings okay there is the Gospel of Mary, the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Philip, a um, number of, of different very uh, well-read texts. And we can see that uh, Mary's uh, closeness to Jesus results in tensions with other disciples. Um, and due to her gender, okay? And uh, it says here, and this is, I understand, this is Wikipedia. And what I think is interesting about Wikipedia is how it is the consensus opinion. Right? The great thing about Wikipedia is how hundreds of thousands of people edit Wikipedia. It is the democratized uh, understanding. Now... You know, it's the um, what could we call it? It's it's the uh, the most sanitized we can get. So when Wikipedia says something which sounds to me controversial, and yes, it's made it through the filter of these hundreds of thousands of edits. Okay, interesting. Now, what is very interesting is how. Uh, Mary Magdalene who was described where was it um, described uh, in Luke the Gospel of Luke uh, described as a supporter of Jesus' ministry out of their resources out of her own resources she was probably relatively wealthy and uh, starting in the year, this is where it's very interesting. Starting in the uh, the end of the fifth um, 
century no what whatever well, five where are we five ninety one okay in the year five ninety one which is the is the end of the fourth century I suppose we're talking um five ninety one Pope Gregory the first conflated Mary Magdalene who was introduced with Mary of Bethany and the unnamed sinful woman who anointed Jesus' feet. And the result in a, is a widespread belief that she was a repentant prostitute. <coughs> and that's when it first happened. That was the moment she started to be um, her, her image, her, her brand, effectively, as an... Uh, yeah, as the apostles' apostle, right, uh, started to be um, hit with fake news. Yeah, that's how we would deal with it these days. That's how um, opinions would be swayed these days. And one way of doing it would be to say that she was a person of ill repute, and that's exactly what happened. And through the centuries. That's what happened. Interesting. Now, what we did was, <coughs> I was encouraged uh, by Father David, uh, who is the chaplain of St. George's, to have a look also at the Smithsonian's uh, web website, uh, which is uh, fascinating. Who was Mary Magdalene? And, um, I mean, it, it, it does... Uh, talk about all of the different ways that she has been portrayed and how really um, she was um, someone who uh, was uh, an, 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 an apostle right this is uh, where are we? It says uh, it's it's quite un. Uh, where 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 was it? It was rather categorical when I read it earlier, and I thought, wow. Um, so Mary da, 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 was a leading figure that attracted Jesus. When men in the company abandoned him at the hour of mortal danger, Mary of Magdala was one of the women who stayed with him even to the crucifixion. The first person to whom Jesus appeared after his resurrection and the first to preach the good news of that miracle. That is where she becomes, by definition, an apostle. These are among the few specific assertions made about Mary Magdalene in the Gospel. From other texts of the early Christian era, it seems that her status as an apostle in the years after Jesus' death rivaled that, even that, of Peter. Okay? So, that's amazing. Right? Uh, now, of course, how much of this, you know, can we say is uh, true? Well, we, 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 we it's it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. Time has passed. Uh, there are lots of different accounts. Nevertheless, she was, for a moment, she was the whole church. She was the whole church, as we understand it, as a person who, uh, you know, believed what Jesus said, uh, understood and believed that Jesus had died, understood and believed that Jesus had risen again. And um, that is the measure of a Christian. And, and loving, loving Jesus throughout. Um, so that's the measure of a Christian. Very interesting. A Christian apostle. Now we come to today's uh, bit of debate, 
okay? And I, I understand that debate in this case um, is, um, is difficult to have a debate when it's one person speaking, but not with, not with this uh, great uh, thing which is uh, Twitch, okay? With Twitch, we can have uh, a debate and uh, actually, Father David has liked what we're doing at the moment in Facebook, and that's really good. So thank you, Father David. Um, now, with Twitch, what you are able to do is to uh, click on the, uh, the, the links that you might be able to see either in YouTube or in Facebook. Um, and, and you are able very easily to follow this uh, transmission that we have here when we do this on a Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday every week so five nights a week uh, five nights for me I don't know what time it is with you probably if you're in California it's 8 30 in the morning if you're in the UK it's 4 30 in the afternoon when we start and if you're in Thailand it's 10 30 at night okay so um, you know, we are, uh, we, we, we're, we're hitting folk at different times uh, through their day, but we, we transmit out five times a week and we try to make it engaging and interesting and it only remains engaging and interesting if you are able to uh, make comments or ask questions or um, engage with us. Okay, now um, let's turn our attention, shall we? to something which was and remains rather controversial, okay? And this was uh, something which I posted onto Facebook and um, I, I hadn't realized it was going to get so much attention, but it did, okay? So tomorrow is the feast of Saint Mary Magdalene, okay? And this is seen by some as a good opportunity to argue against the ordination of women. Your opinions, please. Now, so far, we've had something like 118 different comments uh, and one share. So uh, it, <laughs> it, it wasn't, uh, I, I genuinely uh, was asking for a couple of opinions, right? Um, I didn't appreciate that it was going to uh, ex ex explode uh, like that. But certainly as far as my timeline is concerned, I don't normally get 118 comments on my timeline. Um, but there you are, there we have it. So there's, that, was the, uh, that was the original question. Now, um, what we're going to do was uh, we, we will unpick some of these opinions, okay? Um, and I, 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 I don't, um, in the interests of at least attempting to be impartial, okay? Uh, I, I, I'm going to say out loud those arguments that um, a person who might want to argue against the ordination of women might put forward, okay? And what we are going to do then is I'm going to switch off this Facebook thing so you can't see it. And then I'm going to go down and read you, not all of them, one by one, um, but if there's a new point made, I'll, I'll read that comment and we won't read out the name of the person who wrote it. Okay, so at least there's some level of anonymity on all sides, and that's all good, okay? Now, usually, I do need to say that usually, I'm of the opinion that free speech is only, um, well, is not more important than freedom from discrimination, okay? And specifically where language is inflammatory, um, then I, 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 I'd rather not say something, okay? So, and if it's to do with, with you know, race or gender or whatever, um, if it's on the issue of, of, of um, sexuality or something, 
then actually there are some opinions where uh, opinions are not valid in the public domain. Don't want to know, thank you very much. That's my opinion, okay? That's where I stand. Um, certainly when it comes to race, I think that if someone's got a racist tongue, then they should shut up, okay? Um, that's my opinion. Now, uh, for the sake of, so now what I did do, uh, I had a conversation with somebody who uh, was saying, great opportunity, we can uh, argue against the ordination of women. And I, I, I've listened to some of the arguments, okay? And so let's, let's, let me just um, say some of these arguments, okay? So the first argument, uh, which is undeniable, is Mary was valued by Jesus, but was never confirmed as an apostle. By Jesus, de facto by Jesus, okay? So uh, Jesus did not turn to Mary uh, Magdalene and say, you are an apostle, okay? So that's number one. Number two, even when Judas was lost out of the gang, right? So he completely betrayed Jesus and had gone and, and was, was effectively going off to kill himself. Um, Jesus did not fill that spot with Mary. Okay, so, so far, so good. We've not said anything which uh, is, uh, I don't think we've said anything which is inflammatory or, 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 or sexist uh, against women. Okay, so, so far so good, right? We can, we can have a debate about the first two. Okay. We do not know Christ's opinion directly on the ordination of women, but we do know that he, what he did not do and he did not give equal status to Mary as an apostle. This is interesting. Okay, so, hmm, we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this because this is an interesting one. And we'll come back to it. Okay, there is a debate there, but we're going to come back to it. Number four. Some might try and argue that Mary's position was influenced by women's social status at the time. But had that been the case, Christ would have simply changed that. In so many other cases, Christ simply went against social convention. But in this case, he chose not to. Again, so uh, number three and number four, similar in my mind, as far as my, uh, as far as the, the response is concerned. Number five, an apple and an orange are fruit, but an apple can never be an orange. And this is where it starts to get uh, difficult because it says it can never be an orange. And what we mean is here in the same way that a woman can never be a priest. Hmm. So this is where we are, we are going off of the, um, the mainstream debate about Mary and starting specifically to talk about the ordination of women as priests. Okay, so number five, point number five, uh, is, is an area for debate, good debate, healthy debate, and, but debate nonetheless. Okay. Number six, and we're getting further and further. In the very beginning, it's only about Mary, but we're getting further and further into speaking specifically about women. Women can be excellent ministers, and in many cases, better than men, but can never be priests. Okay. Now, again, five and six, I, I, I would consider very, very similar. Uh, in their approach, in their tack, um, and I think probably the response is going to be similar. 
Okay. Number seven. Some women have been ordained and the genie cannot be put back into the bottle. But in effect, their ordination is irregular and simply cannot be construed as part of the apostolic succession. And this is, this is where somebody might say, I can't receive communion from a woman priest. Okay, that's what's being said here. Now, five, six, and seven uh, will respond to, I think, in about largely the same way. The first four, uh, we can have some, some, some good debate about. Okay, five, six, and seven will come to. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this screen. Oh, look, we've got somebody who's a follower. Women are obviously worth less than men inherently, as it is written in the Bible. Okay, so simplified human would agree with this idea that uh, women are worth less than men inherently. So, I mean, I, 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 I don't agree with that, all right? Um, but, um, uh, I, I mean, there are, there are lots of things written in the Bible, uh, which, in my opinion, uh, we don't take everything in the Bible literally, okay? Um, there are some people who do but I'm uh, not one of them. And if somewhere in the Bible it says women are worth less than men inherently, then um, you're, you're reading a different part of the Bible and maybe even a different Bible from the one I've read. Um, so um, happy, happy to have a debate, happy to answer questions. If simplified human, you've got more um, more points to make or more or some questions to ask me I'm very happy to to answer your questions okay um, and and I suppose uh, this question which I uh, posed on on Facebook was bound to create some of some of the language which uh, might for some be very very uncomfortable Nevertheless, what we are going to do is uh, go through this and we're going to answer some. So we've got uh, Mary was the apostles to the apostles. Okay, and we this is generally accepted. She was the first person to um, ups, to she was the first person to have uh, committed herself. Uh, to the um, to the uh, position that she had seen um, uh, Jesus die and uh, she had seen the empty tomb and she had seen the resurrection and she had seen the resurrected Christ and um, and 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 and, and she was the first person to carry that message as an apostle, using the definition of the word apostle, to others who are known as apostles. So she was the apostle to the apostles. So that, grammatically speaking, in terms of English language, is correct. She was the first one to spread the news of the resurrection, is correct. It's the day to say why women's ordination is right, as she was a disciple with the male disciples. I can't, I don't disagree with what uh, is first being written. And that's, that's, you know, right. So she was the first evangelist that proclaimed the risen Lord. He called her by name while the men were hiding, the woman Mary was out there seeking. Okay. And this idea that 
uh, by uh, 591 or whenever it was when 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 Pope uh, Gregory the Great uh, started saying that she was a prostitute. Um, we know what that is. That's about the uh, relatively early church keeping Mary and keeping women socially in their place. Okay. So that's very interesting because um, one of the things that we've we've seen was that um, was that actually the arguments uh, for ag against the ordination of women if we're using Mary Magdalene actually Mary is so far turning into a person who uh, is at the at the vanguard of the Christian church she is the absolute vanguard um, and there's no way around that I can't see so far a way of denying that okay I understand simplified human I understand that you're saying women are obviously worth less than men inherently but so far in the story of Mary Magdalene uh, I've seen no evidence of that now I actually think you're, you're a little bit wrong um, if you know I, I, I don't think anyone is worth less than anyone I think everyone has value and um, that's that's not just me I, I think lots of people think that everyone has value um, so yes now now let's let's have a look so uh, we've got um, now let's have a look when we're talking about uh, we, we had argument number what was it Mary was valued by Jesus no confirmed as an apostle well she kind of was when he said her name when he showed her himself to her first of all and she was expected to share that good news by definition de facto she was an apostle she was the only apostle for that moment she was the only person who carried the good news interesting now when Judas was lost Jesus did not fill the spot with Mary no one did right no one filled the spot Jesus did not fill the spot with anybody the other apostles filled the spot and they did it by election yeah there was an election and uh, sure enough they did not choose Mary but here is the point where we are able to say uh, well uh, maybe we are able to look at the social status of women at the time and those folk who were those apostles who were voting which one of their mates was going to be filling the spot are they likely to choose Mary? Was she a mate? Uh, as far as they were concerned, did they? Did she have the same um, status as another man? Maybe not. Maybe not. Now uh, we've had a couple of uh, posts to do with how uh, women's testimony simply wasn't equivalent to men's and that has to do with the fact that when a man was swearing on his progeny his seed uh, that relates to uh, testes and testifying and the relationship between that word those words and at the time they did not know that women contributed the egg they they assumed that everything uh, came from a man and was contributed by a man into the woman. The woman was only a vessel of the man's seed. Okay, and so um, that reinforces this idea 
that women were lesser simply because of of um, uh, 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 the the use of language, the use of uh, people swearing on their on their, their their children's children or whatever, and uh, the relationship. And it's interesting. I didn't know the relationship of the word testify to testes. How interesting. How masculine. Uh, language can be sometimes. Oh, we've got another. We've got another follower. Here we are. So, uh, Sin W Priest um, has followed. So, thank you for that. Thank you for your follow. Um, we've got five viewers, which is really great to see. And hopefully, I'm doing uh, folk justice. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying terribly hard to. Um, We've, we've listed uh, all of the reasons why um, Mary Magdalene might be a good opportunity to argue against the ordination of women. And I uh, posted um, something onto Facebook. And now I'm just going through um, some of those responses. Now, um, what I, I mean, we've, we've got a lot of responses, and so we're not going to be able... Uh, to go through all of them and certainly what I'm not doing is mentioning people's names because I don't think that's very useful um, Or who they are or whether but folk if you want to find my post then it's very straightforward Okay, it's a public account and people can so um, You know that's your you're, you're welcome. You're welcome to uh, get involved now we've got um, some other some other replies here so um, what, what does it say? Uh, let's have a look. I mean, it's interesting just to postulate what would have happened had Mary been chosen by the other apostles. That would have been very interesting. Um, but uh, they didn't. So, um, it's somebody has said that uh, this is a conversation they've never heard before, never in relation to Mary Magdalene. Has the feast been hijacked by those against the ordination of women? And uh, that certainly is not my intent to hijack anything. The intention is to have a conversation. I know I'm having a conversation with myself. I know I'm speaking to myself. But I, 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 I want to um, go through and, and, and give everyone a fair crack of the whip okay so oops now what have we got so we've got um, some some folk here who are saying that um, her cause is not helped by the mistaken identification with a repentant prostitute or sinner who washed the feet of Jesus with her tears and many still make this connection which is true um, and there is uh, now it's interesting because the idea um, that um, you know where were we? So we had this 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 uh, the language of 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 Mary Magdalene being an irregular woman. Um, so not living as a wife or a daughter um, and some titillation because of uh, the claim that she was a prostitute and uh, she wasn't so now some people have asked why are we even bringing this up now why are we even bringing this up and 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 I replied to that uh, to say that because the argument did not simply go away when some churches started to ordain women and in some quarters around the world is still hotly debated so now um, another person has said there must be um, they must have it backwards Mary Magdalene is a fine role model for the ordination of women okay and um, We've got uh, a, a, a person who is talking about their, their own uh, priest who is not only ordained, but she was the first uh, woman to be consecrated as a bishop in the 
ecumenical Catholic communion. Um, so it should be a day to celebrate 2,000 years of female witness to Jesus, to Jesus despite all the odds and facing almost insurmountable obstacles within as much as outside of the church. So, you know, I, I, I can see, I can see that. Um, certainly my, my mother, my late mother, was a huge advocate for women's rights. Uh, was a huge supporter of, uh, well certainly in terms of telling us about the suffragettes and suffragists um, and the rights of women in terms of voting, in terms of their own health, um, in terms of choices of their own body. And um, I imagine her being here with me when we are having this conversation, okay? And I think so far, I haven't said or done anything which she would be, uh, I haven't betrayed her or her memory, okay? Um, but it's a fine line to question something which one, you know, which I have been raised um, with this thing being a fact. Right? This is non-debatable. This is a fact. The, you know, the, this position of being um, is is part of my core. And I think somebody else said, "What do you mean? How can how can something be uh, intrinsic to you when it's about you know this is about an opinion about something that's learnt?" And I'm telling you, if you grew up in our house, then uh, it was intrinsic. It was, you know. Uh, you breathed it. We we ate and breathed um, our mother's opinion. And don't get me wrong, um, it 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 wasn't a kind of like it or leave situation. It was just a way of it. It, it was just a way of being. So for me, uh, the opinions which are being uh, espoused in the comments. Um, sound normal okay and the position of looking for ways to uh, argue against the ordination of women which something which has in in the anglican church existed for coming on to 20 years uh, is arguing against something which has existed for almost half my life right and um so I, if, if, I'm, if it looks like I'm having difficulty doing this conversation, uh, it's probably because I am having difficulty. And uh, so of course, where, where folk have said respectfully, I won't be participating, okay. <laughs> that sounds easier, doesn't it? That sounds easier. Um, now, now, let's have a look. So, let's go through these arguments. Mary was valued by Jesus, but was never confirmed as an apostle. Neither were Timothy or Titus. Okay. So, then someone else has said, there seems to be some underlying assumption, being one of the twelve equals ordination. I know that this underlies many people's understanding of the apostle holistic succession but even within the time frame of the New Testament Paul is using the term apostle in a dynamic sense his sense of apostolic ministry including his own extending beyond the 12 and is not confirmed nor confined by human authority okay and we've got uh, Gal Galatians 1 1 he's very use of the terms super apostles even though he is scathing about them suggests that he sees apostolic ministry as this wider category and he includes Junius as a superlative example of this true apostolic ministry and that's in Romans 16 7 very very interesting so this idea that Jesus would be conferring something on somebody uh, when in fact it's this kind of evangelical 
um, you know, uh, Christians on the move, dynamic Christians, a bit like, I don't know, in my mind, I don't know why, I can see Challenge Annika running around telling people, I've, I've got something to tell you. This is, uh, you know, a revelation I want to share with you. Um, this is something I want to celebrate with you. I want us all to understand this and believe in this and uh, celebrate together. That's how I see the apostles, okay? And I think that um, this idea of uh, apostolic succession doesn't necessarily follow uh, in the early, early, early church. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to agree there with that, uh, with that comment. And I, 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 I don't have to straight away, but you know, look. So now, um, let's have a look. And it says Junior first among the apostles was fine with the Roman Catholic Church until they realized it wasn't Junius and meant that she was female. Then they murdered the Greek and tried to change the meaning. Jesus is said to have chosen 12 men and lists. The lists don't quite overlap. Paul describes plenty of others in ministry and as apostolic women were seen as equals, which seems which scandalized Rome. Women may well have been ordained as late as the 7th century. When the church became the official religion, priests became civil servants. Women couldn't be civil servants, so weren't useful to the state. So don't ordain women. It wasn't about following Jesus. It was about following the state. Interesting. Okay, interesting. Very, very, you know, all interesting and supports doesn't support the claim that Mary was valued by Jesus but never confirmed as an apostle actually this is counter to and uh, very I mean it's just interesting and then I'm um, just to, to identify there's a mixture of men and women arguing it's not this is not just only women who are fighting back there's a combination of men and women making comments here it's interesting. Even when Jesus lost Jesus did not fill the spot with Mary, uh, Jesus didn't fill the spot with Matthias either. The 11 cast lots, we've said this already. We do not know Christ's opinion directly on the ordination of women, but we do know what he did not do. He did not give equal status to Mary as the apostles. And here we have an interesting situation because We've got that uh, he did admonish James and John for asking questions about status, okay? And it says um, that Jesus did choose interesting people to be partners in his ministry, including a Samarian, uh, a, a Samaritan, sorry, woman, and Mary Magdalene, among others. Um, and here we have a situation where we've got question uh, point number three. We Christ's opinion directly on the ordination of women, but we do know what he did not do. He did not give equal status to Mary as the apostles. And this response is really interesting. He says, I read that differently. I, th in fact, I think the biblical witness is the other way around. He did not give equal status to the apostles as he did Mary Magdalene. Uh, and uh, it is only not if order, it is only not an argument in favour of women being ordained. Um, it is only not an argument in favour of women born, being ordained if ordination and leadership are distinct, and they are not. So that's very interesting. What an interesting idea, just flipping it on its head. So, okay. So it's very interesting. And other people have said there's just not enough information here. Either way, there's not enough information. So, um, 
Here we are, number four. Some might try and argue that Mary's position was influenced by women's social status at the time, but had that been the case, Christ would have simply changed that. In so many other cases, Christ simply went against social convention, but in this case, uh, he chose not to. And uh, someone's come along and said, well, yeah, but he, 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 didn't, he didn't, you know, change slavery. And it's true. Right? So there were some uh, social conventions which are abhorrent, which are appalling, which anyone in any church around the world these days would say, that's an outrage. Christ doesn't appear to have too many issues with it. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so those are the arguments uh, which were relating specifically to Mary Magdalene. Now we're going on to those which relate to a woman. Women, specifically. Okay, and this is obviously a bit strange because I'm, uh, I'm not a woman. Okay, um, but we'll go through it anyway. An apple and an orange are fruit, but an apple can never become an orange in the same way a woman cannot be can never be a priest and uh, this is an assertion not a rationale apples and oranges are different species of plant this argument is biologically invalid men and women are both human um, uh, it's a, 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 a lot uh, one of the characteristics of this debate is a loss of the sense that men and women share so many things as psychological and spiritual human beings and many women have been ordained priests it doesn't hang on to the Y chromosome or depend on someone having balls I was called the calling was affirmed by a diocesan and provincial panel then the same training as a man and finally approved by the diocese and the bishop I've been a priest for 12 years now and feel blessed to do the job which is part of the sacramental ministry of the church I know many women priests. My father himself, a priest, wasn't too sure at first because he didn't like women who were pushy. But how do you get to the right place without some push? He did say that the church had been ordaining old women for years, which was probably not polite to some of his colleagues. There are good priests of both genders and some transgender ones too. So that's... Uh, I mean, you know, I, I read that and I listen to that and that resonates with me. Um, how can you argue against that? But there will be folk who do argue against it. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not going to. Um, so... We could say then that the argument about uh, men and women uh, that they're not the same the notion of an ontological difference between men and women contra to Galatians 3.28 which would end up saying that Christ's incarnation as a man does not equally redeem women well, that would be a nonsense wouldn't it that would be an outrage so of course it does and then someone else has said, that means women can't be baptised or receive grace. And of course they can. Okay, so then we've got the next one. We've got the, uh, the next point, which is women can be excellent ministers, and in many cases better than men, but can never be priests. And this is an assertion, it is not a rationale. This opens up some interesting questions about what a priest is. If being a priest is not identified by the fruits of character and service, the calling working itself out in ministry. Gentiles can be friends of God and excellent support, but only Jews can be priests. Gentiles can never be fully part of the Jesus movement. And it's the same kind of argument. Equally flawed. So... Can only Jews be priests? Interesting. Now, let's go on to number seven. Some women have been ordained and the genie cannot be put back into the bottle, but in 
effect. Their ordination is, ordination is irregular and simply cannot be construed as part of the apostolic succession. Um, and folk have come back uh, to this and said, uh, honestly, rubbish. Okay, apostolic succession was only started, uh, you know, very late on. We all know that, and uh, it's a nonsense. If apostolic succession confers a kind of spiritual packet, authority, inward change, spiritual equipping, it, uh, then if that always passes from one to another as ordination, then women surely are in the apostolic succession if they received it, because it always passes at ordination. Does by a valid bishop. Why wouldn't they then be able to confer it? I'm sure that there are some sophisticated answers to this, but I'm wrestling to see them. Of course, there are many Christians throughout the world who deny the validity of all Anglican orders, men and women, by applying the same kind of rule-based theology. It seems to me that Jesus' criterion of judging by fruits is both forward-looking and grounded, and a better approach than all the tight theories in the world, which sometimes fall apart in our hands. Okay. Very good. So, someone else has said, I'm not part of anything irregular. I've done this for years. And uh, there we are. And there were lots of evidence, there's lots of evidence of female ordination in the early church. And I've, I've, I've learned about that certainly on courses I've done with Ed X and with Coursera. So, uh, lots, um, it's very interesting, right? Uh, it, there, is, there is a history of uh, women in the church uh, and at the at the vanguard right and finally someone here says uh, apostolic succession is folkloric poppycock okay well look we don't we don't all agree with all of these comments okay um but it's worth reading them as a female priest this thread is difficult to engage with while for some the issue of female ordination is an interesting theological debate for some of us, it's our identity, our vocation, our ministry, and the sacrifices that we have made that you are discussing. And uh, quite right. Yeah, I mean, it's painful. I, I, I you know, I, I intentionally, I've gone into this, I suppose, but I didn't appreciate how I'd be tearing open old wounds. Um, and it was not the intention, but, but here we are. So... Um, someone else has said um, not many people do that anymore and that's the idea of coming up with arguments against the ordination of women because of the feast of Mary Magdalene and so they've said not many people do that anymore seems like you're flogging a dead horse and quite right now one thing we're going to do is have a look at the C of E the C of E the Church of England have made it clear that the argument about the validity of the ordination of women is not appropriate and what is appropriate is finding a way for us to live alongside those of a different view with grace and kindness now certainly that is uh my view uh you know i i i like and prefer a cup of tea some people don't like uh tea and prefer coffee um now I understand we're dealing with people's lives and vocations and callings. Um, you know, I like tea. Now, if somebody doesn't like tea, I'm sorry, I'm going to continue drinking it. Uh, it, it, it. It doesn't mean that you aren't allowed to drink your coffee. Okay, you can have your opinions uh, and that's okay. All right. Um, I've got mine though. So we have five guiding principles. And what we are going to do, let me just see if we can um, put those somewhere where you can see them. Yes, we have got them there. So the five guiding principles are 
uh, set out in the House Bishop Declaration of May 2014 are, number one, now that legislation has been passed to enable women to become bishops, the Church of England is fully and unequivocally committed to all orders of ministry being open equally to or without reference to gender, and holds that those whom it has duly ordained and appointed to office are the true and lawful holders of the office which they occupy, and thus deserve due respect and canonical obedience. Number two, anyone who ministers within the Church of England must be prepared to acknowledge that the Church of England has reached a clear decision on the matter. Number three, since it continues to share the historic epis, episcopat with other church, episcopat with other churches, including the Roman Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, and those provinces of the Anglican Communion which continue to ordain only men as priests or bishops, the Church of England acknowledges that its own clear decision on ministry and gender is set within a broader process of discernment within the Anglican Communion and the whole Church of God. Number four, since those within the Church of England who, on grounds of theological conviction, are unable to receive the ministry of women bishops or priests continue to be within the spectrum of teaching and tradition of the Anglican Communion. The Church of England remains committed to enabling them to flourish within its life and structures. Number five, pastoral and sacramental provision for the minority within the Church of England will be made without specifying a limit of time and in a way that maintains the highest possible degree of communion and contributes to mutual flourishing across the whole Church of England. Okay? So, it says, this is what we've decided. You don't have to agree with it, but this is what we have decided. This is a decision which has already happened. Okay, and you can carry on doing what you're doing, and that's okay. Okay, just don't tell us that what we have done is not okay. And for those folk who have already been ordained, don't say that they're not legal, because they are. They are regular. So that's where we are in the Church of England, and uh, in the in in the broader Anglican church interesting of course there are these pockets in africa and such where uh, they they absolutely uh, are, are 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 at odds with uh, a lot of the the votes uh, in the church of england but there we are we are where we are and we can't and uh, can't go backwards and so the the point of order was that the genie can't be put back into the bottle um my position is uh, that, um, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure anyone would want to try to undo what's already been done. And this, um, this idea, this notion of using Mary Magdalene to argue against, um, you know, the ordination of women, um, really is a moot point. That's it. Now, I mean, just in conclusion, you know, I know that um, that the uh, this debate about women in the church has been going on for uh, certainly millennia, okay, and it will continue to go on wherever uh, men have had the power in any kind of institution um, historically and where women are fighting and have fought for equality um, 
I, I, I find it very sad. It actually makes me feel quite nauseous um, having these kind of, even though it's a one-sided debate, we haven't even had a proper argument. There hasn't been two people apart from Simplified Human, who I'm going to give credit to, even though I don't agree with uh, anything he says. Women are obviously worth less than men inherently, as this is written in the Bible. We don't agree, but I'm giving you credit, Simplified Human, for writing something on the Twitch uh, comments, on the Twitch stream. So well done, credit to you. We don't agree. I don't think we will ever agree, I'm sure. But um, respect for being able to be engaged and for voicing an opinion. So what we are going to do, as we do uh, every night, uh, as we come to the end of um, one of these transmissions, we are going to uh, say uh, from the Church of England's daily commonworship.com, which I'm a great fan of, uh, there is the night prayer. And I, 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 I tend to say the collect uh, for the night prayer. Okay, so, so let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son restored Mary Magdalene to health and mind and body, and called her to be a witness to his resurrection. Forgive our sins and heal us by your grace, that we may serve you in the power of his risen life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Look, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining. I know it's gone on. Normally we finished after about 20 minutes, but today I did want to try to include as many of these different points as possible. So thank you for sticking with me. I've still got one viewer. Um, and so, yes, it's been, um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster and uh, I feel rather exhausted. So thank you again. I'm going to say with prayers and best wishes. Bye-bye.